Put on your protection and let's add a custom armor set to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding courses available down below. With over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right. Fans are back and tell you more. In this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom armor set to our mod right here. It's going to be absolutely freaking awesome. So for custom armor, what are we going to need for that? Well, of course, the first very first step over here is not registering anything in the mod items class because we're going to need similar to the mod tool tiers we're going to need a armor material and for that what we're going to do is in our item package we're going to right click new java class called the mod armor materials class there we go now this is going to look quite crazy because uh it is actually crazy uh, and we're going to copy over two register methods basically a register method that's going to help us to register multiple different armor materials if we so choose to all of the code as always is actually only one i i'm just see there's only one method that we actually have to copy over and that is the register method this is going to be available to you down below highly recommended to check this out and you can basically take a look at it and we can see that we have a location we have a quip sound we have an ingredient this is going to be the ingredient that we can basically repair this with we have layers over here those layers are going to be very straightforward it's just a very basic location and then down here we can see we have a type map this is actually the thing that we have to well sort of register ourselves or create ourselves but i'm going to explain it as we register our different uh, our material if you want a different equip sound you could add this as a parameter as well and then instead of you know hard coding it right here you can literally just add it right here that would also work but that's going to be fine so to register the armor material we're going to make a public static final holder this is going to be the holder of net minecraft core right here of a type armor material this is going to be the armor material class there you go this is the bismuth underscore armor underscore material equal to the register method the name is bismuth then we're going to make util dot make and we're going to put in there a new enum map this enum map is of armor item dot of armor item dot type dot class after the first closing parenthesis then i'm going to say attribute and then make an arrow right here for open curly brackets and inside of there we're going to say attribute dot put then we're going to put in boots right here with a five and then we can just duplicate this four additional times for leggings we're going to put in a seven for the chest plate we're going to put in a nine for the what else is there the helmet there is going to be a i believe a five as well that's great and a body is going to be an 11 after the first closing parenthesis we'll also have an enchantability of let's say 16 we're going to have a toughness of two let's say and a knockback resistance of 0.1 and then a supplier of mod items dot bismuth dot get for the uh, basically the ingredient to repair this with what are those numbers well these numbers are your different protection amounts for each of the different types of armor that you have right boots leggings chest plate helmet and then body would be for armor that is for animals uh, when you want to look at armor material well basically the types the vanilla types press shift twice and we're going to look at the armor materials class include non-project items and they're in net minecraft world item over here and we can actually double check as you can see these are the protection numbers from vanilla right here and those are quite well it's actually a really good idea to take a look at this and basically see that you can then very easily balance your own materials and there we go with this done like i said the code here is available down below that's going to make it quite easy then let's actually go into the mod items class and let's take a look first and foremost we're going to have a public static final this is going to be a deferred item of type armor item in this case this is going to be the bismuth underscore helmet helmet there you go underscore uh, underscore no equal to items dot register it's going to be the bismuth underscore helmet there we go this is a supplier of a new armor item passing in the mod armor materials dot bismuth armor material then the type which is going to be the helmet and then new item properties dot durability and this durability is equal to the helmet so this is going to be armor item dot type dot helmet that get durability and here we pass in a factor let's say for example 19 for the sake of argument and with this done we can duplicate this a couple more times and well then just change all this so the sec second one is going to be the bismuth chest plate and then same thing here this is the bismuth chest plate 
And then very importantly, we change the type over here to chest plate and we take the change we type here to chest plate two. So we want to change four things for each of the different items here. Very, very important that we don't forget that because otherwise we might just, you know, be wearing our leggings at the top like uh, as a helmet. And that is definitely not something that you want to do. So in this case, changing everything to leggings here. And then last but certainly not least, we got the boots right here. And these boots are made for walking. So we're going to do this one right here and then boots right here. And then last but certainly not least, the boots right here. And there we go. With this durability factor, we can also press shift twice and go into the items class, include non-project items again. And we're going to find this, I believe here, it should be fine. Yep. And let's just look for the helmet, let's say. And here we can, for example, find the, maybe not the turtle helmet. I mean, that would be fine too. But we can see that this is the leather helmet that has a durability factor of five. And you can see there are different ones. So it goes all the way up to 37 for netherite stuff. So that is a thing that you can, you know, once again, keep in mind for balancing purposes. But that is basically that. Let's add it to the creative mode tab over here because, well, that is always a good idea. This is the helmet. We got the chest plate, not the chisel. We already got that. The chest plate, though, the leggings and the boots are very important. And for all of this, we, of course, now need some assets. The first one is going to be the translation. Very straightforward, though. I kind of feel like this does not need any explanation as we've seen this time and time again now already. So this should be fine. And the same thing goes for the item textures. These are going to be the four item textures right here. Very straightforward too. However, there is another one and that is the other texture because, well, wait a second. When we have custom armor on, there is a model around us. Exactly. And that goes into tutorial mode, textures, then right click new directory called models. Inside of that models folder, we're going to create the armor folder spelled in the American spelling, very important. And then we're going to copy over the bismuth underscore layer underscore one and bismuth underscore layer underscore two. And these ones, well, these ones are responsible for, well, exactly what you can think of. And that is to actually have the 3D look that is, that's going to be, well, around your player, basically. And that is going to be quite important. Those are, like I said, available to you as well for download. And those are also important that the name here is right. So it has to be bismuth underscore layer underscore one and bismuth, bismuth underscore layer underscore two. Name here has to match this name right here. Very important that that is all done correctly. And of course, it is in the correct folders. Otherwise, it's not going to work. With that done, we then can move on to the data gen. And you think, oh, I mean, that's easy enough, right? Because data gen, obviously is simply going to be a item model JSON file, right? It's just a basic item model JSON file. Ah, ha, 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 ha. How wrong are you? Very wrong. Because we want to make our custom armor trimmable and their, the component of making it trimmable is that the item model JSON file changes if it is trimmed, right? That means that we're going to have a different, well, it's going to have a different texture if it is trimmed. And for that, what we're going to need is a lot of stuff. Once again, I'll copy this over. This is all available to you down below. Uh, and you're going to see why in a second. So the first thing is a linked hash map right here for trim materials. These are needed because the there's a model index right here. So from 0.1 all the way to 1.0. And depending on what the material here is, it's going to color it a different color. And then what I have here is an insane method what I want to describe as an insane method, and that is this craziness here. Trimmed armor item right here. And this is actually going to take a an armor item because it doesn't it doesn't matter that much, but it's going to be an armor item. And the idea is that what we have is first of all, shout out to El Redstone Tantino, Red Redstone Yano, Redstone Yano, there you go, uh, for making this. I had to really change this up a little bit for 1.21 because in 1.20 it was completely different. Like the entire like method was completely different. I don't know. They, they just change a lot of stuff. I don't I don't know why they do this. But whatever the case may be, this basically makes it so that for each of our different armor items, we will actually generate an additional item model JSON file for each of the different materials that is right here. That's the whole idea. It's pretty crazy. It is absolutely whack. But this is sadly what we're going to need because uh, there is no other way in Neoforge currently to actually use this. If there ever is, then I will be a grateful, eternally grateful. But for the time being, this is all locked away in the... Ooh, can I know what this is? Item model... It is actually part of the item model generators class, which we don't have access to, or slash we have kind of access to it, but not really because the generate base armor trim template method, while, you know, 
this basically includes, includes with the generate armor trims method, basically all that we would need. Uh, number one, it is private. And number two, even if it was public, uh, I don't think we can use it. And number three, we can't even copy it over because there are private methods that are used from this class. It sadly is all of them. It's a mess uh, in some capacity, but probably it's going to be handled at some point. So we're going to call the trimmed armor item method for mod items dot this is going to be for the helmet, and then we'll just duplicate this a couple of times. The chest plate, the leggings, as well as the boots. And that is almost everything we're going to need. The last thing we do need is for the uh, tags, and that is going to be the item tags to make this particular armor set trimmable. We want to call this dot tag item tags dot trimmable armor, trimmable armor, and add all four items to it. Not a tag, but we want to add the items to it. So mod items dot this is going to be the helmet again, and then just duplicate this. Uh, we also have to do the dot get, of course. There you go. That's going to be the chest plate. It's going to be the chest plate. We're going to have the leggings, and we're going to have the boots here at the end, ending with a semicolon. And there we go. This is now everything that we're going to need. So, of course, number one thing that is very important is the layer, right? The layers right here, the textures. And then, secondly, basically the insane method that we have to copy over. It just is what it is. Sadly, currently, this is just what we're going to need to do. And then we're going to be fine. So for th with this, basically, let's just run the data over here so that it generates all of the JSON files. And I will show you just for the sake of argument, it's going to generate like 46 JSON files or something like that. It's, it's actually crazy how many JSON files you need, because for each of them, you're going to need 11 JSON files, right? Anyway, four different, there you go, 46, 45, actually. 45 different JSON files. You can see that in the item models, you can see all of this craziness. Like it is, it is crazy the way the way that it is set up. But sadly, it is what it is. With all of this generated, though, we can now jump into the game and see if it works. Oh, I found it back in Minecraft. As you can see, the bismuth stuff has been added. And if I put it on, I mean, come on. I just look absolutely amazing with it. And now the question is, does it also trim? And of course, the answer is absolutely freaking lootly maybe lapis is not the best listen i don't know which is the best material to try with this because uh yeah none of them are going to show up very well on this but i maybe maybe this is going to be fine there we freaking go and if i put this on now let's actually get this one in here as well and if i put this on look at that that definitely works so that is custom armor as well as making the custom armor trimmable freaking awesome man as per usual, all of the code is available down below, but that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll add a full armor effect. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.